Katet poked her head around the cave entrance, watching as Andrew used his arm to sweep the newest four-inch layer of snow off the solar panels. It had snowed heavily last night. Again. Only this time, the storm was very, very violent. Something which Katet had never seen before. At one point, the winds had gotten so bad that the heavy cave door was forced back from its snug position. She just about had a heart attack when that happened, her feathers sticking up on end as she sprung up from her bed. But Andrew was quick to put it back into place, making sure to drag the nearby table up against it to act as a brace. But even with Andrew's quick actions, the winds from the storm had just about snuffed out the fire and chilled the room a great amount. Unsettlingly, what was left of the flickering firelight gave her the privilege of catching just a tiny glimpse of the storm outside, and she saw nothing but white. It was like a wall of angry streaking snowflakes past the entrance, a blur of white that cut off the world a foot beyond it. Katet learned a new human word that night. Blizzard. She hoped she'd never have to use the term again in her lifetime. After securing the door, Andrew made sure to feed the fire a good amount of wood, and she scooted her makeshift bed as close to the flames as she dared, finding it hard to sleep with the winds howling outside. She was relieved to find that once morning came, the skies were clear and the sun was shining. However, all the sunlight also revealed the destructive aftermath of the storm. Taking her eyes off of Andrew for a moment, Katet observed the broken branches and some of the large, fallen tree limbs that had snapped off their sturdy anchors. The wood splintered and frozen stiff. Her eyes roved around, falling and rising with snowy hills that got increasingly larger with every snowfall. At the sound of crunching snow, Katet refocused her attention on Andrew. He brushed off his arms, walking up. Panels are all cleared off now. The battery could probably use a day to charge again. Otherwise, we could try figuring out a direct connection setup if you want to work on it right now. I've never tried it before, but I'm sure you could figure something out. Katet thought for a moment before shaking her head. I don't think that would be too useful. The days that the sun is fully shining are already so rare. It's best to just use the battery. It's more reliable anyway. He shrugged. Guess you're right. Katet cocked her head when Andrew paused next to the door turning around to look up at the sky with a hand braced against his forehead. Sure feels nice to have the sun out again, though, with a clear blue sky nonetheless. Cadet nodded her head in agreement, her plume of feathers bobbing along in sync as she took a moment to appreciate the sunlight as well. But then something about what Andrew said confused her. What, what do you mean, blue sky? Andrew turned back around, raising an eyebrow. At his silent answer, Cadet clarified, Andrew, the sky isn't blue, it's purple. He blinked twice, pivoted on his feet to glance at the sky again, then crossed his arms. Uh, nope, that's blue, he said before glancing over his shoulder out of the corner of his eye. You need to get your eyes checked? Maybe working on those black boxes with your eyes half-crossed all day isn't such a good thing. Katet's feather plume raised in agitation as she shot him a glare. I'll have you know my eyesight is perfectly fine. Maybe you're the one who can't distinguish the obvious difference between blue and purple. He kept his back towards her, returning his eyes to the sky. Nope, it's definitely blue. One of her crown feathers twitched. It's purple. Blue. Purple. Blue. Fully annoyed now, she clenched her beak. In one quick movement, she flared out her crown feathers, shifting them minutely but precisely in one direction, and letting the deep purple iridescence come out in full. She stepped forward strongly, demanding, Then what do you call this color? Andrew turned back around, tilting his head slightly. Purple? Exactly. And it's the same color as the atmosphere, just lighter, she said gesturing with a wing to the sky above them. Andrew actually paused, his eyebrows pulled inwards in confusion. He brought a hand to his beard in thought, thinking for a moment. Huh, okay. That's it? Just okay? He shrugged. Who's to say your purple's the same as my purple? For all we know, any time we identify a color, it could be something completely different, yet we have learned the same name for it. Katet lowered her feathers slowly, blinking in concern. But you can very well see that my feathers are purple, and we agree on that. So how could we not see the same color in the sky? Andrew thinned his lips, humming in, th humming in thought as he took off his mittens. He walked past Katet in the doorway, making his way over to take a seat on the log stool, most likely seeking the warmth of the fire. He began unlacing his boots and unzipping his jacket. Well, if the atmosphere is anything like Earth's, which I would assume it would have to be similar enough considering I'm breathing, then it would mostly be comprised of smaller elements like oxygen and nitrogen, which scatter light in a specific range. Intrigued, Katet relaxed her feathers and walked over to the human, hopping up to her own perch. She nodded. Yes, the shorter wavelengths would be scattered. However, it's not the only factor. It is also dependent on the spectrum of the solar system's sun. He pulled off one of his boots, wiping some of the half-melted snow off with his sleeve, then glanced up at Katet. Last I remember, my sun emits a larger range of blue, which contributes more to blue being scattered. Although I have noticed that the sky is slightly darker than that of my home. 
but it's still the color blue to me. So it makes me wonder if maybe you actually have better eyesight than me. Katat adjusted her wings without thinking. They tend to shuffle restlessly on her back whenever she was in deep thought. She let Andrew finish removing his winter gear before speaking. What spectrum of light are you able to see? She hadn't thought about it before, but maybe Andrew couldn't see specific ranges of wavelengths. Andrew leaned forward, stuck his hands out by the fire, then looked up slightly in troubled thought. The way Common categorizes light is different from what I know. Humans can typically see those around 380 to 700 nanometers. Interesting. So you should definitely be able to see violet. How do your eyes perceive light? Uh, I think we have three color receptors? Katet's crown feathers lifted up swiftly in one laminated motion. You only have three? Arians have seven separate detectors. Six of those are dedicated to the main colors, such as red, orange, yellow, and green, blue, and violet. The last detector has a limited view of ultraviolet wavelengths, which would be shorter than violet. So if you only have three, then how can you see the range of light you specified? Having only three receptors would severely limit your view of the spectrum. Are they able to identify colors in between by stimulating two of them at the same time? Do shades of colors have a different effect? He patted his hands in the air placatingly. Whoa, whoa, too many questions there, Feathers. Eager, Katet leaned forward, barreling on. But how do you see all the other colors? Does it have something to do with the detectors themselves, or is there something going on with the way your brain processes it? He gave her a flat look. I'm just an engineer, Ket, not a biologist. The extent of my knowledge is limited to half-remembered classes of high school bio and some stuff I learned in flight training. Her feathers lowered halfway, and she sagged a little, pouting. Andrew gave a small laugh through his nose. She was always so eager to learn about things. Look, the best guess I have about it is that humans can't perceive violet very well. I mean, it's at the end of the spectrum we can see, but I think it has to do with the way the receptors are stimulated. All I know is that we can see blue much better for some reason. Katet nodded slowly. She wished she could learn the full reason why, but his answer would have to do. Perhaps she really did have better eyesight than the human. She found herself more than a little pleased with the thought. She glanced over at him with a slight teasing look in her eyes. Who knew a death world that couldn't even get the color of the sky right? She said, slightly amused. He rolled his eyes. Yeah, yeah, soak it up, Featherbutt. Perhaps he thought she couldn't see it, but the other side of his mouth was still slightly curved. Her feathers bounced as she laughed quietly. She saw Andrew shake his head in response. As the conversation quieted down, the two settled down into a comfortable silence. Katette started pruning her feathers, adjusting and situating the ones that stubbornly shifted out of place from time to time. She was somewhat irritated by some of the dirtier ones, but the water only cleaned off so much, so she quietly dealt with the inconvenience on her own. While preening, a thought occurred to her. She leveled her head back in Andrew's direction. I have been meaning to ask, do you know how much longer the winter will last? It feels as though we've been dealing with it for about two months now. Andrew glanced up, thinking. Well, we're at the peak of winter right now, so it'll start getting warmer soon. I'm guessing we've got somewhere around a month, maybe a month and a half left of snow, then it'll start melting. That made her happy, though she couldn't help wishing it was even sooner than that. But she would take what she would get. That's good news. I can't wait to see the vegetation again, even if it's of the death world of variety. He shook his head. It's not as amazing as it sounds, trust me. But I guess we won't be freezing our asses off day in and day out, so that's kind of nice. Andrew leaned forward again. Speaking of time frames, how's the progress on the last flight recorder going? Do you know how much longer it will take? Andrew asked quietly. Katet's feathers sagged ever so slightly as she looked down. The repair on this one is going to take quite a bit more time than the others. There's a lot more corrosion and burnt-out wires compared to the other ones. Still fixable, but... Andrew, I... I don't know if I can handle another one of these turning up useless. I'm tired of these failing. Andrew was quiet, watching Katet's falling expression carefully. It only took a moment before he stood up, grabbing the log stool and setting it down closer to her. He sat down, his eyes full of empathy, as he spoke in a gentle voice. I understand. It's disheartening. But you know as well as I do that we have to at least check to see if we can get anything from this last one. Her eyes were downcast, staring at the ground. Andrew, even if... That's a big if at this point. We do obtain something from these. Who's to say it's even anything useful? She looked up with a dispirited expression. What would be the chances that the exact piece of information we need would still be on there? And the bigger problem is that if they do all turn up randomized, I have no idea what our next step would be. And if dark energy is playing a role, then what are we to do? The mere fact that we're stranded on a death world means that we're within a pocket of dark energy right now. No ships, well, no functioning ships, will be passing by. Andrew leaned down towards her, his eyes calm but firm. One step at a time, Cat. Trust me. You can get lost trying to figure out everything all at once. First, we need to verify whether all the boxes we have are viable, so let's focus on that. And if it turns out it doesn't work, then we'll have to come up with another solution. 
It took a long moment, but Katet eventually nodded. She was hesitant to do so, but knew there really was no other choice in the matter. She had to finish the repair just like Andrew said, even if the outcome was more than likely to turn up useless. It was hard to ignore the obvious, unfortunate trend that these boxes were following. Their subsequent failures continued to loom over her. It was a dark and anxious feeling, but Andrew's steadfast attitude helped smooth out some of that emotion, if just a little bit. Calming her worries as much as she could, she tried to express the same steadfast look on things that the human did. I will focus on the repair then. Andrew nodded, giving a small smile. Good. He then pushed off his knees, standing up. I'm going to work on patching up some of my gear. I noticed some of the stitching was coming loose, and knowing my luck, something important's definitely going to fall out of it. Tet chuckled, watching as Andrew walked over to the bench, tinkering with some of the supplies. Her eyes eventually trailed back to the fire, its flames flickering and popping like they always did. She wondered what to do now that she was waiting on the battery to charge again. She shrugged to herself, stretching her wings and neck simultaneously while taking a deep breath. The sensation of stretching was wonderful, and also slightly tiring. Either that or she was just fatigued to begin with. That made her pause. She found herself a little more tired than normal these past two weeks. Granted, for today's tiredness, it was the fact that last night's storm kept her up most of the night. However, it was a tad odd to lose some of that energy for no reason. Perhaps she still wasn't used to this planet's gravity, and being stuck in the cave for most of the winter definitely didn't help things. She shrugged off the thought, deciding to take half a soul hour nap. Cadet hopped down from her perch, setting herself down in her bed of blankets. Her head curled around her form, resting snugly within the folds of the cloth. The heat of the fire soaked into her feathers, a familiar sensation that lulled her anxious mind. She closed her eyes. She would get back to work tomorrow. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Everything I use is in the description below. If you have a story you'd like to hear narrated, please let me know and I'll contact the author and we'll see if we can make that happen. Thanks again for watching. It's a scary world out there, but remember to look up seek the stars.